Welcome to our video, which looks at the FD dynamic portfolios, specifically how we select funds, or as we describe it sometimes, our fund filtering process. My name is Chris Thomas, and I'm one of the DP's investment architects. And I'm Declan McAndrew, Head of Investment Research at Foster De Nova. So our investment process has three stages, which we're going to consider one today, which is the fund selection process. And that in itself is subcategorized into five steps. And those five steps are that we should define the asset class universe, that we should define the investment fund universe, we should critique the characteristics of those funds. And then four, we should judge the active funds using quantitative ratios. And finally, the fifth step is that we judge the active funds using qualitative research. So let's consider step one. Step one was define the asset class universe. What we mean by that is what types of investments are we going to invest in and where and in what industry? So phrases such as equities, shares, bonds, property, perhaps even the word alternatives, those will be the asset classes that we, be, we will invest in. In terms of where we invest, we also invest geographically. So we perhaps may invest in the US, Western Europe, the Far East, UK, clearly. We may also invest in specific industrial sectors, um, such as tech. Uh, and perhaps even invest in specialist sectors. So step one, define the asset class universe. What about step two, Declan? Yeah, what, what we try and do is to make sure that our universe is as broad as possible for retail investors. So rather than restrict ourselves to UK-based unit trusts or OICs, we look beyond that to those that are domiciled outside UK for retail uh, clients, investment trusts, ETFs. So what we try and make sure is that our widest scope possible to begin our filtering process, because that means that the, the number of possible um, investment solutions is wider and ensures that we don't miss any particular solutions that are appropriate. And also certain asset classes such as property and private equity are not appropriate, we feel, for the open-ended structure. Close-ended vehicles such as investment trusts are appropriate to win that. So, in terms of our filtering process, we start with the greatest number of possible inclusions and then filter our way down to the next stage, which is uh, looking at the individual characteristics of the vehicle. Chris. Yeah, so step three, the individual characteristics of the fund, that would include its size. So, for example, we would typically not invest in a fund that has less than 20 million pounds in it. The other extreme we probably wouldn't invest in a fund that has more than a billion. Not that there's anything wrong with a fund that invests more than a billion because clearly the fund manager has been successful. But we find from um, anecdotal and statistical evidence that fund managers who, who have a fund that has more than a, a billion pounds in it, that they become a bit defensive. They become psychologically conservative. So they may not be taking the same investment decisions as they were before once their fund gets larger than a, a billion pounds. Another characteristic we look at is how long the fund manager has been there. If they've been there less than five years, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but they may not have had sufficient time to be able to evidence that they're any good at what they do. So a longevity period is essential in us looking at um, uh, a particular fund that we'd invest in. And then finally, a key attribute or key characteristic rather for um, assessing the characteristics of a fund is the authenticity of active management. Many, many fund managers claim that, they're acti that their funds are actively managed, when in reality, they're, they're nothing of the sort. In fact, uh, there's a phrase that has been defined called closet trackers. So they, they're, they're not in any way, shape or form active management. We have a, a, a trademarked uh, process we call active management assessment process, which is very specific and very robust in identifying whether or not an active fund manager actually really is that, as in actively managed. Step four, Declan. Yeah, the quantitative filters. And just a point on that active management assessment process, the vast majority of funds that are labelled up of active do not get through that process. So actually, we can be assured that those that go through to the quantitative filtering process, the hard data, are the ones worthy of consideration. And quantitative means looking at what the performance has been over different time periods, not just the numbers, but looking at the risk that's been taken, particularly focusing on downside risk, which is doubly important to, 
to clients to not take adverse risks to achieve those returns. So we look at that, we put it into a filtering uh, process. That process has been critiqued externally as well. So it's been validated externally to do a good job to get us to a smaller pool of potential funds, investment trusts, ETFs, that we can go through to the, the next stage, the qualitative uh, process. Chris. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Declan. So moving on to our final step, step five, that's where we employ qualitative research. And the first four steps that we've looked at, that they can be categorized as the quantitative steps or the, the numbers, the hard facts, as Declan has just described it as. Step five, however, isn't so much the hard numbers, it's more the soft facts. What things should we consider in addition to those numbers? To assist with that, we have some external experts who sit on investment committee, which we cover off in another video, but their qualitative research and expertise assist us in understanding things that numbers just can't tell us. One example would be, does a fund manager as a team agree with their opinions? Why is that important? Well, if the fund manager were ever to leave, would their team follow and continue the processes they put in place? It doesn't mean that they were right or wrong. It's just we would have selected that fund on the basis that the fund behaved in a certain way. If now the fund manager's left, would his team follow through on that? Don't know. So therefore, we need to ensure that there is consistency of that fund because that would be the reason we would have chosen it. We hope you found our five-stage fund filtering process informative. If you'd like more information about the FD Denat portfolios, please contact your Foster De Novo partner and they'd be happy to help. Alternatively, please call us on 030-332-7866 or email us on advise-me at fosterdenovo.com. Thanks for your time. Thank you.